right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I am with Tim Kintz, who is actually uh, normally in Dallas, but today is in Austin, right? That's right. Yeah. The, uh, and uh, uh, Tim is a NADA Academy graduate and former dealership general manager, and he's been working in and out of the car business for over two decades and has been studying the automotive marketplace and has written this wonderful book, Frictionless, Closing and Negotiating with Purpose. Um, so, Tim, let's start off. Like, what was what was the genesis of, of this book and, and why you decided to write it? The need. I, if you've ever gone out and bought a car, you know the... Uh, just, just a couple of times. <laughs> the frustrations, the grind, the, just the, the hassle dealing, mm -hmm. dealing with amateurs, really. It, most people don't mind negotiating. It's negotiating with amateurs is what drives people mm -hmm. nuts. And that's the need for it is so important. You know, my background, I started out washing cars, detailing cars at a car dealership in Alaska and worked my way all the way up through general manager and running dealer groups. And you know, I'm, I'm empathetic to salespeople on how hard the job is, you know, who, who likes going out and buying cars and yeah. dealing with salespeople. So, um, so part one of your book is called Understanding uh, Friction. So, um, explain to the to the viewers a little bit about what the frictions. I'm sure they felt it, and I'm sure they could probably explain it too. But explain your concept of friction. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if there's ever a hundred percent frictionless negotiating in anything. Mm -hmm. right? Buying sure. a house, buying a watch, furniture, buying a car. There's always going to be some friction, but it it really comes down to is. Am I dealing with a pro and, and are they making me feel like I win, right? Without having wins and victories in a negotiation, then even if you get the car, you walk away, you don't feel like you got a good deal. Because to me, a good deal is not necessarily a number. It's, it's perception, right? It's a feeling more than a number. And I think sometimes mm -hmm. salespeople get so emotionally and financially attached to a, a customer. And it's not only... My wife's in real estate too. It's the same thing that sometimes we forget that I mean, we got to earn that trust. We have to earn the right to be able to sell that customer. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a really good point. It's how you walk away, f how you feel. Uh, because even if, you, even if you don't get it, you know, I mean, because you never get everything you want in a negotiation, right? And you have to give a bit. And, you know, there's a little pain on both sides. But if you feel like it was a fair negotiation and you got a fair deal at the end of the day and the other per person was doing their best to ensure that it was a a, a win-win situation you feel good about it it's when you it's when you don't feel like it was fair or that the person opposite was just working against you the whole time is when you, you feel really you know you just don't feel good as you say even if you purchase yeah it's i mean from both sides of the table right have you ever mm -hmm. made somebody an offer on something and they're like yep i'll take it and you're like um all right yeah. i'll let you know because <laughs> you don't feel like you got a good deal because they took it right away and it's just in yeah. It's natural to want to negotiate, to want to feel good about it. But on the same side, when you're the salesperson, you've got to be confident that, I guess, number one, you did your job mm -hmm. and you've earned the right to be able to ask for the money. You can't be afraid to ask for the money. If, if you think you have to give everything away or give mega discounts, then you either didn't build enough value or you don't believe in your product. Yeah. And, and I think that's exactly because I think uh, if, if, if you, um, when you're dealing with the salesperson, if you don't feel the confidence coming off of them and the belief they have in their product and the fact that they really love it. I mean, you, you, when you go to a car dealership, you can have like such different experiences. When you're dealing with somebody who really loves the brand, loves the car, can't wait to tell you all of these things, is excited for you to buy it. It's such a different experience and you feel way more uh, invested in the process. Yeah, a sale is made when you transfer your enthusiasm to the customer. Yeah. Right? No matter what it is that you're selling. And if you're not enthusiastic and excited about it, how the hell is the customer going to be enthusiastic and excited? And yeah. it's, we did it to ourselves in the car business. But the, in, in the book Frictionless, it, it doesn't matter yeah. if you're in, in, in real estate or whatever. It's, you follow the rules. You can be a great negotiator, but it's 
I guess number one rule to me and the golden rules is negotiation is optional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if you build enough value, it is what it is. And, and you have to trust it, but it's uh, not feeling like you just have to give everything away. Gross profit. Those aren't dirty words. And, you know, I always remind the guys in selling, in selling cars that volume is your job. You're supposed to mm -hmm. sell a lot of cars, but gross right. determines how well you do it. Yeah, yeah. And I always think it's interesting if you think of, uh, you know, the negotiations when you've been on the buyer side uh, and you can often you will often buy something that's, you know, maybe the more expensive option or maybe it's the mid range option or whatever, because the value is really explained to you about why it's uh, it costs a little bit more maybe than other ones. And the confidence and trust that you have that this salesperson has been able to achieve with you. So, um, so to your point, it's not about giving away the farm all the time. It's about it's about being confident enough to be able to communicate why you're, why the person should pay this amount for your product. Yeah, it's, I think it's so often that in a negotiation, at least in the car business, we negotiated out of desperation instead of inspiration. Too right. often we're more afraid of losing a deal than we are inspired to make the deal. Mm -hmm. That's, don't negotiate out of desperation, negotiate out of inspiration. Be excited mm -hmm. about making the deal. Don't be afraid to lose it. That's and the, and the problem is when you get into that, then you teach the buyer behavior, right? Because it's for you. Know, if we go back to the car dealership uh, example, like people say, okay, let's let's start walking out and see how they react because they're used to, as you say, sometimes like you know, there's maybe they've had the experience of people being desperate in the past, so they go, okay, now we get to this point, then let's sort of let's decide that we're going to walk out and see how they react. So you're teaching you're teaching the buyer how to behave. Yeah, it's. We have for years and years, we've done it to ourselves in the car business. It's, it, I mean, everybody is stacking deep, selling cheap, and you have a race to the bottom. And mm -hmm. then, you know, in, in any negotiation, whoever cares least about the deal is going to win. Right, right. Meaning, right. They need to want to buy my car more than I want to sell it. Not that I don't want to, but I needed to create so much mental ownership that that customer can't imagine not owning that deal. It's like yeah. a good realtor. If, if you have a good realtor and they walk you and your family through a house, man, they're talking about how your furniture is going to fit. They're having the kids pick out their rooms. You're already mentally ordering curtains and, and rods to hang them on and a new refrigerator. And when you walk out of that house with a really good realtor, you've mentally moved your furniture into that house before yep. you've even made an offer. Yeah. And that's anything you're selling that people take mental ownership before they take physical or financial ownership. Yeah, and I think and I think what's interesting uh, is that sometimes people think that maybe because they're in a different industry. Because I mean, I think if we just go back to the car one, okay, so maybe you've got a big uh, an auto mall, right? And there's like twenty different car brands there, and people say, "Oh, yeah, it must be really hard because you're competing with all of these other ones." But but it doesn't matter what industry you're in, you know, just because you're not all side by side. Maybe you're you know virtual, maybe it's an online product or whatever. Um, you're still competing side by side and you still have to differentiate the experience. Yeah, it's, and, and not make it about the numbers. So often in, in mm -hmm. our business, all they do is sell the numbers. Hey, if I can get you a great deal, what's it going to take? Yeah. How low do we got to go? Make me an offer. Well, you ask me to make you an offer. I'm just going to give you some ridiculous offer. <laughs> You're going to come back with something higher. And my mindset is, well, why the hell did you ask me what I wanted to spend if you're going to come <laughs> back in numbers that aren't even close to that? It's yeah, yeah. You ask stupid questions, you get stupid answers. And too often in sales, there's a lot of stupid questions that we ask, and we wonder why we get these answers. Well, whoever starts a negotiation has the advantage. You know, we've all heard win win negotiation. Well, a win is when I set the numbers and I come down. Every time I come down on my numbers, you win. It's a victory. Right. But yeah. if you start the numbers, I got to grind you up, grind you up, grind you up, and you never feel like you win no matter what, if, even if we do make the it's yeah. so so what are some of the uh what are some of the the tools for for frictionless closing uh because i think that's obviously i mean there's friction in all parts of the sales process but it seems that when it comes to closing that that's where a, a, a lot of the friction comes in and some of that is because things aren't properly qualified and all of that we know but what are some of the tools for frictionless closing i think a couple things is what i call removable objections 
That's negotiating one on one. No matter what you're mm-hmm. what you're negotiating and selling, it's you put things in that you can afford to take down, right? Built-in removable objections. Um, I may show you the best way to get the vehicle based on what I think. Short-term money down is the best way to go. It's an appreciated item. Why would you leverage it for eight, seven years and pay interest on that? You're better off. It may not be your way, but my job is to show you the best way to get it. Then it's a removal objection when I extend the term out to help fit it in your budget. When we reduce the amount of down payment up front, it's a win. Uh, it's like when me and my wife buy uh, rental houses. We go in and put an offer. I say I want $3,000 in carpet allowance. I want paint allowance. I want the, I don't want any of that stuff. I want the price, but I build in removable objections so I can make them feel like they want. I didn't care about any of them, but if you don't put those in to the negotiation, things you can take out, then I'm not going to feel good no matter what you're selling. And I think that's, that it's one-on-one. The other part with selling cars is it's such a budget. Yeah. It's got to be a budget focused negotiation. It's not just the payment. It's your total cost of ownership of your car is what's mm-hmm. most important. Right. You, I'm, you may be getting a new vehicle and you may be paying 600 total a month on your current car and the new payment's going to be 780, but you right. might be saving $180 a month in gas. You yep. may, it may have prepaid maintenance. Your total mm-hmm. cost of ownership every month might be $850 right now on your current car. Your new one's going to be 780. So technically you're going to be saving $70 a month. And that's, yeah. And and I think and I think a lot of a lot of people miss that piece. And it's funny how, I mean, even in even in the business we're in with the on the CRM side is sometimes when we have a conversation and we say to to prospects to compare the total cost of ownership, not just the license price right now or the the, the license and the the onboarding or whatever, but the cost of administrators and all of this kind of stuff going down the road. And they're very surprised that there's a lot of things that they never thought about. And then, as you say, suddenly realize, wow, um, the, the, what we thought was a cheaper option we're going with actually is going to turn out to be a more expensive option. But you have to do that because people don't naturally think total cost of ownership. They think immediate out of pocket. Right. My, my job is to show you how to display, operate, and show you how my product works and how it's going to, in the long run, help you make more money, help you be more successful, make your life more convenient, whatever it is. And it's not just the check I'm writing for the CRM. It's, mm-hmm. it's going to be more efficient. We're streamlining it. Yep. It's going to have a better workflow. It's got up-to-date templates. Whatever it is, it integrates video into the CRM. Whatever those are, now I don't have to have a third party to do my video. I don't have mm-hmm. to have a third party for my texting. It's all figured into one, right? Whatever the, whatever the mm-hmm. features, advantages, and benefits are of your CRM or of the car. And yeah. it's not just dollars and cents. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and if you think about it, and then the other thing is, uh, obviously, you need to understand what are the, what are the, the features and, and the benefits that are most important to you, right? Because some of them aren't, you know, I mean, in... Especially, and I think this is the big, uh, the, 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 the big uh, fall down often in car buying is that some of the, the salespeople would just go into trying to tell you all five million features of the car and you're just like, whoa, I can't even remember what you just said. And, and then you're thinking of some of them, yeah, that's great. I don't really care it's about that. It's just the that. data. Dump. It's just the yeah. data. They're, so, they're, just, they're just sticker readers and they're so boring they can put a cup of coffee to sleep. They're trying to yeah. <laughs> them out. Right? People don't care. You, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Find yeah. out what's the compelling reasons why you want your vehicle, and then I'm going to customize it. You came in mm-hmm. a blank canvas. My job is to get you to paint a picture of your life. Then my job is to paint my vehicle into that picture of your life right. and create that mental ownership. Yeah, and uh, absolutely, absolutely. And the only way you can do that, obviously, is by asking some questions and trying to understand who I am to begin with. And I think that's a, that's a part that skipped over too quickly. Well, you're right. It's too often as salespeople, we listen to respond instead of listening to understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah a very, that's a very good point. Yeah. They weren't listening to a word you said. They were just waiting for you to shut up so they could start talking. <laughs> That, exactly exactly um and have you ever tried that with your significant other it doesn't work very well um, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, on both sides. Um, so, um, so what what are some last uh, comments you'd like to make, to, uh, Tim, and advice for people as they to to make it more frictionless and and much more of it? And, and here's the thing, Tim: Why shouldn't the purchase experience and even the negotiation? Why shouldn't it be an enjoyable experience at the end of the day? You gotta have. You gotta be confident in what you do. Confidence mm -hmm. leaks out of you. It's, it's, it's like the aura that you have, and you have to really work at your trade. You have to work at your craft. Right. We went through a boom. We had 10, 12 years of economy that just went straight up, and bad mm -hmm. habits were formed during good times, and good habits were formed during bad times. And there was a lot of bad habits that were formed. Yeah. And I always say that more people were buying cars than we were selling them cars. Yeah. And right now is a reset. And now you have the opportunity to make yourself great. There's people that make it happen, people that watch it happen, and people that say, what the hell just happened? <laughs> and you have that choice right now to, to learn your craft, to whether it's reading the book Frictionless, whether it's it's going online watching other videos get as much knowledge as you can but when you have knowledge you know we've always heard knowledge is power no knowledge is dangerous in sales just because you mm -hmm. think heard something doesn't mean you can actually do it too often yeah. we practice on customers instead of practice between customers when you practice your closes when you practice your objection handling techniques then it becomes very conversational when it's conversational that's when you're going to be great at negotiating. It's just, it's, but it starts with the six inches between our ears. Yeah, and I think that's, a, and I think that's a fantastic point to finish on because yes, um, it's going to be tough out there for for a lot of people in a lot of industries. But this is your chance to shine if you're willing to invest in yourself. And quite frankly, over the last while, has been a fantastic time for you to invest some time in yourself, particularly if you're if you're you know uh, shut down and locked down at home or whatever. But it, but now's your chance to shine, and as you say, now is the now is the time that real salespeople are going to be differentiated from people who just happen to be in a good place at a good time. Exactly right. It's life doesn't care if you succeed or fail. You have to make yeah. it happen. Absolutely. Listen, Tim, this has been fascinating. All of Tim's uh, information would be in his contributor bio. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do, Tim. Yeah, I'm president of Kent's Group. We obviously focus mainly on the car business, RVs, anything motors. Um, but on Kent'sGroup.com, we have the books on there. It's on Amazon Prime also. Uh, at Kent's Group, we have a shop on there. It's got a lot of other resources, some downloads, uh, closing downloads, negotiating downloads. Uh, I challenge you guys, you know, to to do everything you can to get better. And and the words may be different in your industry, but the techniques are the same. And, and just have fun. Rule number one yeah. is selling. Have fun. When you're having fun, man, everything else takes care of itself. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, yeah, I'd recommend you check out uh, Tim's book. You'll see a lot of great reviews on it too. Well, listen, Tim, this has been fantastic. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.